Hey everyone, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is just a little intro to uh, an odds and ends video. I think it'll probably be July 2024. I haven't done them every month, but then I haven't had stuff to include in them every month. So they'll probably just come out whenever I have little bits of things that I want to put together into a video to, to show you. Um, this is something I'm working on. I'm going to be doing a pit pen Stetler pigment pen color along in this book. So a little sneak peek to that. I'm uh, not sure when that's going to come out. Hopefully relatively soon. I've got the background done already. Uh, so now I just need to get filming the actual coloring. But without further ado, we will get into our odds and ends video. For those of you that aren't, um, haven't seen before, uh, this is an idea that I got from the lovely Maya and the equally lovely Doodle Robot. And they have done sort of, you know, uh, coloring update videos. I think Doodle calls hers the, the robot report. Just videos where you've got sort of little bits of things that maybe don't fit in another kind of video and you just sort of put them all together. So I decided to call mine Coloring Odds and Ends. So yes, without further ado, here we go. July 2024, Coloring Odds and Ends. So I'm filming this with natural light just because I'm I'm trying to see if you guys can, I'm going to move this, pick this up. And this is, uh, well, it was inspired by one of my viewers and the viewer commented on one of my pit pen videos that they had been coloring in miniature secret garden. Well, you know what? I'm not sure if it was miniature secret garden or miniature enchanted forest. Those are the two miniature books that Joanna Basford has. Um, because I had mentioned that pit pens work really well in Joanna Basford books, but the viewer was finding that they actually soaked through in the miniature book. Now, I was, I was curious about that. I have colored, <laughs> you can, okay, it's pretty dark. I don't even know if you could see that. I did color that with pit pens. Now, there's absolutely no blending because those tiny elements, they're just too tiny. And so with no blending, they didn't go through. And then when I was coloring in this book, I actually skipped to the end. I don't know why I did, but I just did. And I colored those two pages, again, all with pit pens. And I didn't find any bleed through there. And I did do blending. And I colored this with pit pens, gain blending, but no bleed through. And I colored these two pages. Now the white flowers, I think that's a white gel pen, but the leaves are pit pens. And I mean a tiny bit of blending, not much, they're pretty tiny leaves. But even so, no bleed through there. Again, leaves with the pit pens, no bleed through there. So I was looking for something new to color and I pulled this book out and instead of going to the back, I started on this page. And this is kind of, well, I guess it's technically the first actual page. I mean, there's, there's this page and then there's the title page and the book belongs to page, but this is the first page. And I've been doing a little bit of work with Stetler uh, pigment brush pens and pit pens and the Tombow and just sort of, you know, blending things out. And then I started doing these leaves right here with two different pit pens. It was these two, um, 174, 172, so earth green, chromium green, opaque. And they're not... I, that's going to be really hard to see and I was hoping it would be easier with natural light, but maybe not. I can see where a tiny, it, it's not even that it went, th it almost went through a tiny bit of ghosting there, tiny bit of ghosting there, which made me really, well, curious because I had not had that problem with pit pens going through before. And then I started to feel this paper. This paper feels rougher than the normal UK Joanna Basford paper. 
So remember I said before in my pit pen videos, when you have a rough paper, um, even though these are pigment pens, the rougher paper hasn't been polished. My apologies. I should have said the rougher paper hasn't been pressed because I think that's a better expression. Um, a viewer pointed that out to me in a previous video that I'd done, and thank you very much for that. I worked in a pulp and paper mill as a student, and I, I remember the paper makers talking about the polishing process, and I think that's why it stuck in my head. But either way, basically rougher paper has more of those little hills and valleys and, and little fiber bits from the paper kind of sticking out of the surface of the paper. And so it's going to, the little fibers that are sticking up are going to grab onto that ink, whether it be pigment or dye-based ink, and just kind of pull it into the paper, right? So, yeah, I can see where if the, the viewer was coloring, you know, larger areas, and I haven't done any larger areas on here, but yeah, I'm thinking I can see where that would go through. But then I thought, but I colored in here, and it didn't go through. I'm going to, now, these books, I don't know if you can see that, um, they're stitch bound, but they're glued in, in, oh, you people that know books are gonna, please don't yell at me if I get this wrong, folios? Is that what they're called? Right? So you've got, like, a little section, um, and there's, what, six of them total here? So a little section that's stitched in the middle and then glued in, and then another little section, right? that's stitched and then glued in. These first, one, two, three, four, five, well, actually there's seven sections. These first six sections of this book have this slightly rougher feeling paper. Particularly, actually the first section feels even rougher than, than the later sections. The other pictures that I colored in here were in, they just happen to be, this back section. Can you see the difference in paper color there between this side and this side? So right here is the break between, so this is the last, I think they're called folios, is that what they're called? But basically this is the last little section that got stitch bound and then, you know, glued in. This was the section I colored in. I colored, you know, that picture and then I colored that one. This section's paper feels much smoother, like even side by side. This is much smoother than this. So I guess when I was using the pit pens in this back section, the paper was smooth enough that I could do my blending. You know, it wasn't, it, it actually doesn't even feel like it, uh, it didn't peel the paper, it didn't tear at the paper at all. This feels like when I'm coloring in um, the other UK versions of, of Joanna's books, the bigger ones. Whereas, now that I'm working here, this does not feel the same. This Things are not blending as well here as they did in this back section. So, I don't know if you can see that. I can see it. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not a huge difference, but this is yellower than this. This is a little less yellow. This just feels like different paper. <laughs> now, why there would be different paper in the back section as opposed to the first ones, I don't know. But I'm wondering if that's part of why the viewer said when she was coloring in this book, she was having a bleed through issue. Because you know what? I think when I get to the bigger sections, if I try and do some blending, I think I might have the same problem. I will see, um, and I will definitely report back if I find it, but yeah, I just thought I would uh, film this little segment and I'll stick it into a, a future pit pen video. But yeah, th there's different paper in the front and back. Um, we also have Miniature Enchanted Forest. And I've colored this page. Again, not, not really any blending on this page. It was just too tiny. Um, don't think I did a whole lot of blending on this page either. I might have done some on this page, but maybe not. But yeah, I can see there's a tiny spot there where it might have bled through. Tiny spot there where it might have bled through. Don't 
don't see any bleed through there. But this paper feels like the beginning paper in the first sections of Miniature Secret Garden. Now, I don't think I've actually colored anything else in here. Just curious to see about sections here. So there's the section break. Is it? Yeah, it is. I don't think the back section here No, for whatever reason, I think all the sections in this book are all the, the same paper. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm imagining it. <laughs> I don't know. But I do know that when I colored, like I say, in the back of Secret Garden, Miniature Secret Garden, I had no troubles. There was no bleed through. There's not even any ghosting, right? I remember the pens blending really nicely. And I mean, these are bigger areas. I did some, some blending there that, you know, there was different layers of, of pit pen going down. Um, yeah, there's no ghosting, there's no bleed through. So, just a little look there at the the world of Joanna Basford books. For whatever reason, there is slightly different paper at the end of Miniature Secret Garden that made it, uh, made me think that, that pit pens would work well. So, I guess... Yeah, and I'll maybe reiterate this at the beginning of the video, too, if this sec segment isn't at the beginning of the video. Um, whenever you're going to color in anything using markers, always test. Always test first. Because, you know, I, I would hate for you to take me at my word and then have a favorite coloring book of yours wrecked. I would feel really terrible about that. Um, so always test markers somewhere first, just to see if it does go through. Because, like I say, I was... I was curious and now I'm surprised. I, I did not anticipate that the paper in that back section would be different, but it looks like it is. So I've been doing some coloring in Joanna Basford's Miniature Secret Garden and I've been wanting to use pit pens and Stettler brush pens here, the pigment ones. And I've been wanting to try out blending, not even so much blending with a Tombow, but taking you know, putting a little bit of the, the color down and then pulling it out with the Tombow so you get a gradient, but you're only using one pen. D does that make sense? And I've discovered something. Um, I found a little segment just previous where I was talking about how the paper in this book doesn't feel the same except for <laughs> the last segment, the last folio in this book. The paper's different, I think. It's much smoother. This paper feels like sort of normal, normal UK Joanna Basford paper. The paper at the beginning, the, the first six sections of this book, I, I realize they're not broken into sections, but when I say section, I mean, you know, when books are stitch bound, they, there's like a section that's stitched and then it's glued in. And another section is stitched and it's glued in, right? You can see that when you look around, along the spine there. I think they're called folios. The last folio in, in my version of Miniature Secret Garden is different paper. I know. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is. So a viewer had said that they were coloring in, I'm not sure which book it was, I think it was Miniature Secret Garden, and they were finding that pit pens went through. I think I understand where they're coming from now, because I started coloring here. I have colored some pages in the back here, but this is different paper. This paper is rougher. And I think pit pens, if I was to do blending in a bigger section, I think they would go through. I think I'm discovering, though, a difference between the Stettler pens and the pit pens. The Stettler pens, I think, and again, I could be wrong because these companies don't put out, you know, formulas for these things. I think the Stettler pens have more shellac in the ink. And the shellac is something that's in there that makes the ink um, shinier and I think maybe gives it a bit more time sitting on the surface of the page maybe. Um, might also function somewhat as a binder, I'm not sure. But I'm finding that when I try on this paper, 
so this this rougher when I say rough I'm not saying rough but this is definitely rougher than the normal Joanna Basford paper um, when I put pit pen down and then try and pull it out with a Tombow even in tiny little areas it doesn't want to pull as much now on this kind of paper so this normal Joanna Basford paper that's smoother this paper it, it will pull but on this slightly rougher paper the Stettler pens are actually working better for this technique and it seems like the ink in these is a little shiny it's almost like a little not sh thicker <laughs> which sounds funny but that's what it seems like so it goes down it stays on the surface of the page a little longer and I'm able to pull it and get better gradients so I did these leaves down here not not these ones here but these leaves down here using just I know each leaf looks like it has a gradient but each leaf is just one one color so some of the leaves I use this Stettler Willow Green 51 and I put a little dot of color at the bottom of the leaf and then just pulled it forward with the pit with the Tombow blender and then other leaves I put a little dot of the olive green which is the 57 at the base of the leaf and then pulled it forward now I'm trying to do this in natural light because I thought maybe it would give uh, give a better look so that's as zoomed in as I can be so can you see what I've done there with those leaves so dot of color at the base of the leaf and then pull it forward and for the most part it, I think it worked really well you know I don't see um, I, I think you know it pulled a lot of color forward I just I just thought it worked really well so then I thought I would try the same thing try to move this slowly so and make you nauseous for these leaves up here and I did make some of these leaves pink on purpose kind of pinky purple the pinky purple is also a Stettler pen it is plum 68 but the green leaves I thought I would try using um, the pit pen so some of them are may green and some of them are I think the chromium green opaque 174 and I don't think the color moved as well with the pit pens as it did so I did exactly the same technique put a little bit of color at the base of the leaf and then pull it forward with the the Tombow blender I think it worked better with the um, even the pink purple I think it worked better here than what I was doing with the pit pens so on this slightly rougher paper and I know I'm getting picky here aren't I but you guys did say that that you like learning about pit pens and so I'm just sort of sharing what I'm discovering as I'm going so if you have a little bit rougher paper and you're worried that your pit pens are going to maybe bleed through try if you have them please don't go out and buy them just for this but I mean if if you're if you have them and if you're curious um try the Stellar pens instead of the pit pens their ink does seem I mean it's still pigment ink but it does seem a little different somehow it's like it's it feels like it has more shellac in it which maybe means that on a little bit rougher paper it's not going to sink through and, and maybe bleed through to the other side so just a thought but like always try it test it on on a page first not on you know the page you're working on so if it uh, does bleed through and wreck the next page then you don't have to worry about that so always do a test first but yeah just something I've been I think discovering so the Stettler pens seem to work really well now on the smoother paper I think either pen would work but I'm going to do some work with that and we'll see uh, do some testing with that too hey everyone this is a little segment that I'm recording for an odds and ends video I was playing around with some backgrounds and background ideas and I recently had used some oil pastels for the first time to create a background and in the same drawer as because I have drawers the the shallow drawers um, there's two Alex drawer units that I got for my new desk and so I store a lot of things in these shallow drawers and I try to keep like with like in the same drawer where I have my oil pastels I also have my Neocolor 1 crayons because they're similar <laughs> sort of I mean, chemically they're they're similar <laughs> um so 
Neo Color Ones, for those of you that, that are unfamiliar, are, there's quite a glare there, let me get rid of that. They are the non-water soluble crayons from Caran d'Ache. So Neo Color Twos are the water soluble crayons. And you know, you see lots of videos with folks using them for backgrounds and for basing and coloring. I mean, the, the Neo Color Twos are, are lovely. But I also have the Neo Color Ones because I just, I do. There are 40 Neo Color Ones. Now this is a, a smaller set of 30 because I think when I went to purchase, I think I was purchasing from Cult Pens a couple of years ago. Um, they were having a Caran d'Ache sale and they didn't have the 40 set in stock. So I purchased the 30 set. They come in these lovely tins. Um, you can see I have used them. You know, I've, I've peeled them down and, and sharpened them a little bit. To sharpen these, I just use, and you know what? I have no idea where this eraser came from. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, Connie, it's not an eraser, it's a sharpener. And I think I call it an eraser a couple of times. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a sharpener, obviously. It says it's a Stettler eraser. It is made of metal, like it's got some heft to it. It's not plastic, um, but it has two openings. So it's got a regular pencil sized opening and then a larger opening. And this works perfectly for crayons. So yeah, you, to sharpen these, you do need, um, I don't know that I would stick them in an electric <laughs> pencil sharpener. I don't know, that would probably gum things up in there quite a bit. But the nice thing about this is it has blades that can be replaced and the blade is right there. I just run a little bit of graphite pencil through there afterwards to sort of clean the wax off and, and I'm good. So I have used them, they've been sharpened. I bought the other 10 colors because here's the, the 30 colors and then there were 10 remaining and I purchased those open stock and then just stuck them in this little Derwent tin. I think I, I think this came free with something that I purchased. So there's the, there's the other 10 colors. And I was, I saw these in the drawer, you know, my oil pastel drawer. And I thought, I never use them. <laughs> um, I have colored with them. And in coloring with them, I blend them out with my Derwent blender pen. K over on Coloring with K, lovely channel. I love K. She has done some coloring and backgrounds and different things with the Neo Color Ones. And I think she blends with either her Derwent blender pen or she refills her Derwent blender pen with Zest It. I have tried to get Zested here in Canada and ah, we can't. <laughs> or if we can, it's very difficult. If anyone knows of an easy way to get Zested here in Canada, let me know. But the Drewent blender pen works really well because of course these are not water soluble. They're wax based, they're, they're a crayon. They're an artist grade crayon with, with lovely pigment levels in them, but still a crayon. So you need something solventy. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when you color with a crayon, whether it be these or, or Crayola or anything, crayons tend to leave a lot of the white tooth of the paper showing, right? So if you want a smoother look, you're gonna have to sort of, you know, blend that out with, with something. So I used a wet blender pen and I've done that, um, you know, colored with them. I think, have I done backgrounds with them? I think so. I've also seen people use them over top of Neo Color 2s. So, uh, you'll do, cause Neo Color 2 backgrounds can look a little patchy sometimes. And so the colors here, of course, match with some of the Neo Color 2 colors. Cause of course there's only 40, uh, in the Neo Color 1 color range and there's 84 in the Neo Color 2. So using these over top of a Neo Color 1 or pardon me, Neo Color 2 background, you can, you know, if you get the right colors, you can use it to kind of smooth things out a little bit. So I've seen people do that. But I was trying to think, is there another way that I could use these for a background? Now, in addition to the 40 colors, so there's this set of 30 plus, you know, the, and you can get a full set of 40. There is also a little small set of metallics. And truth be told, if, I mean, if you're looking at Neo Color Ones. I'd buy this because 
unless you're going to use them a lot, like I say, for coloring or for sort of tidying up and fixing up some of the blends if on a Neo Color 2 background, um, unless you're an artist that specializes in sort of using crayons and what have you, I, and this is just me, I, I'm not terribly imaginative, I don't know what else you would use them for. Um, yeah. But the Neo Color 1 metallics are... I just like, I, they're, they're metallic crayons. Now, if you use uh, the Derwent blender pen or another blending solution over top, once you've colored with the metallics, the metallic-ness <laughs> will go away. But, and they're, they're in a shiny tin here, so maybe I'll just take one out and I'll put this aside. I don't know if you can see the shine on the actual wax of the crayon. Now I know wax crayons tend to shine anyway, but I mean, these are definitely metallic. And like I say, I was trying to figure out a way that I could use my Neo Color ones because I've, I've, that's what I've been focusing on lately a lot is just sort of using, trying to use the supplies I have, figuring out new ways to use them. And the Neo Color ones have definitely been ignored because I just really haven't known what to do with them. You can buy this little pack of 10 there's a gold, a uh, dark gold, a bronze, a scarlet metallic, pink metallic, violet metallic, um, thalcyanine blue metallic, thalcyanine green metallic, silver, and then one called an ash gray. I used these for a background. And so I'm just gonna show you a little sneak peek. This will be, I'm recording this at the beginning of July, 2024. Uh, this will be in my finished pages for July. Sneak peek, Ooh. but can you see the shine on there? It's like a mirror. <laughs> and that background is the Neo Color Ones. So what I did was I took the Neo Color One metallics, I almost dumped them on the floor, and I put them down using burnishing pressure. And then I took a, just a tissue, just like a facial tissue, and just sort of put it over my finger and just kind of buffed on top. And that's what created that mirror almost looking shine. So I thought, well, I'm gonna test some other things to see if this is just a Neo Color One thing or if I can get that effect with something else. So this was my test, paper. it's very shiny, is it not? <laughs> this was my test paper. So I did have some Crayola. So this, this is also my little, this is my box of things I tested. Now these are ancient Crayolas. So it's entirely possible that brand new Crayolas may, may have performed better. So I tried this out with some Crayolas and these are both, this one just says silver. It doesn't say anything about, and this one says Crayola metallic FX. So the green one came in, must have been a special set of some kind. But this looks like it just came, this must just be the silver that came in like regular sets. These, these are in a box, they're not in the original box either. Um, in a container that have been around since my daughter was young and she's now in her 20s. So they're old. <laughs> but I did the same thing. I laid them down with burnishing pressure. So there's the silver and there's the, it's called illuminating emerald and then buffed with uh, a tissue, just a facial tissue, over my finger. And cover those up. They're shiny, but I don't know if you can see, the particularly the green one got very gummy and it was, you could still very much see sort of the, um, particularly if I tilt it so the shine goes away, the sort of the crayon marks where I was coloring, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And you can to a certain extent with the silver as well. The silver also did this strange, like it would go dark in places and then lighter in places. So you can get the same effect with Crayola because that's pretty shiny, right? But compare it to the Neo Color 1 that's next to it. Look at when I tilt that, that middle row or the middle column, I should say, in the top there. I'm going to move this. 
I mean, look at the look at the flash on these two right here. Those are the Neo Color ones. And particularly if I bend this, can you see the light reflecting in those Neo Color ones? I mean, they're they're literally almost acting. The light reflects there too, but it's it's you can see it's more. The science word would be diffuse. <laughs> it's a much sharper reflection in those Neo Color one. They're almost acting like a mirror. And once you take um, your finger and sort of buff out the... Because uh, you are going to get crayon marks, right? It's a wax and you're going to get marks. So I like to, you know, sort of color, 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 lay it down hard, then go over it in kind of a little scumbling as sort of a, a final layer, and then put the tissue on my finger and just kind of, you know, buff it out lightly. But, I mean, you really get... A mirror kind of effect. So, I mean, I, I don't know, that's kind of a new, well, it's probably not new, probably other people have discovered it too. New to me. Way of being able to use my Neo Color ones so they get some love, they get some use. So I tried it with Crayola. It works, but not as nicely as, I mean, these are just more expensive crayons, right? So I thought, well, I don't have any other crayons, but I have other kind of similar um, mediums. So I thought, well, I have some iridescent Sennelier oil pastels. So what if I lay those down fairly, you know, put a lot down and then try and buff those out? So these are the Sennelier. There was a silver and like a, it was like an iridescent blue. They're definitely shiny. I don't think they're mirror shiny, like those Neo Color 2s in the center there. So you can see again, you're getting a reflection there, but it's a diffuse reflection. I also couldn't buff those out with a tissue on my finger because um, it just sort of wiped it all away. That was a nice thing. And that's a nice thing about this as well. Once you buff out those Neo Color ones, like they're not coming up. <laughs> you don't have to protect that with anything. So the Sennelier, I, I ended up kind of trying to smooth out with just my finger. And you can get a nice, you know, metallic-y effect there. But if I keep, they're, they're sticky, number one like all oil pastels are after you apply them. And I think you would have to fix those. No fixing required there. The Crayola still feels a tad bit sticky too. But these Neo Color ones, I mean, that's smooth. It feels like a mirror, it feels like glass. I tried it with some metallic pencils just to see what would work there. So these are um, two colors from a set of Color metallic pencils that I bought, I think it was a set of 50. So there was the silver and like a like a turquoise kind of color. I think you get a pretty good shine off the metallic pencils as well. It's harder. I would say the Neo Color ones are a lovely kind of buttery, not like a buttery oil pastel, but they're they're soft. They're not sticky. It was easier on my hand, because I do have some hand issues. It was easier on my hand to put down burnishing pressure with Neo Color ones than it was with a metallic pencil. But I think you can get kind of the same effect with a metallic pencil. I still think the Neo Color ones are more mirror-like though. <laughs> but there on the bottom, there's some metallic pencil. And then I thought I'll, I'll just try some water soluble kind of um, gel sticks or, you know, just to see if I can get kind of the same effect there. So I tried some of the King Art gel sticks. Again, I couldn't really buff those out with a tissue on my finger because it just kind of wiped a lot of it away. So I think I ended up using again just my finger. And they're not sticky. They're not sticky like the oil pastels. Um, and again, a, a nice shine. I didn't activate them with water this because I know they're, they're water soluble. So are the distress crayons and the gelatos. But I thought I'm just gonna lay them down and buff them out to see what happens. So this is from the metallic set for the King Art gel sticks. I know, I was trying all metallics. You could do the same thing with the Neo Color 1 um, non-metallics. I just don't think you're going to get that mirror effect. It'll probably still be a little bit shiny, but not that mirror effect. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is one of the Tim Holtz metallic distress crayons. Um, in here, it was called Burnished Pewter. Oh, Brushed Pewter, sorry. Again, had to use my finger, had to use my finger with the gelatos. So I would say the oil pastels and then the, the water-soluble kind of pastels, sticks, you can't really use your finger to buff and get that high shine. You're just going to get more of a, 
an iridescent kind of and the gelato really not at all even though that was a, a metallic gelato and then I thought well I'm just gonna try the Neo Color 2s to see and it's a pretty good shine but again I think the Neo Color 1s these <laughs> It's not bad, but those Neo Color ones, I mean, when I had buffed them out with a tissue, it was like looking at a mirror. I mean, they're shiny, which is not maybe necessarily an effect you'd want for every page, <laughs> but I was just trying them out just to see what would happen. The Neo Color 2s, even with a tissue on my finger, you can see they also spread a lot more. Um, I mean, they're, they're meant to be movable. Whereas the Neo Color ones are not really meant to be movable. You can see a little bit with the blue Neo Color. Sorry, I'm trying to show you this without blinding you. There is a little bit of blue. Um, it, I mean, it it did move a little bit as I was buffing. So you do have to be careful, you know, a little bit about that. I did find though that that little little sort of it's not really a bleed, but it looks like a bleed of color. You can just take your electric eraser and erase a fair amount of that. Once this is down, Neo Color 1s, I mean, there's a lot of pigment in Neo Color 1s, so I don't know that you could erase this once you put down burnishing pressure. Not all of it, anyway. You know, um, you'd still get a staining of that color. You also are not going to be able to put much over top of this once it's down and you've burnished. Because, like I say, this feels like glass. <laughs> so if you're going to try and put colored pencil over top of this, it's not going to stick to it. Um, marker is probably just going to beat up on there. Maybe gel pens, if you put them down heavy enough. But be careful you're not pushing too hard because then you're just going to... Because, I mean, this is just wax. I can probably... To some extent, I, I don't know if you can see... Oops. There's some blue under my fingernail now. So, I mean, I can scrape that off. I don't know, can you see those scrapes there? So, I mean, that's kind of a neat effect too. But yeah, if you're gonna use a gel pen and push, it's gonna make score marks in the wax that you put down. So just be aware of that. So once you put down, now the blue is under my nail. Um, once you've put this down, I think you kind of just have to accept that there's not gonna be, it's gonna be a very two-dimensional background. I mean, it's mirror-like, but you're not going to be able to add other things on top of it for texture or anything else. Now, I did find that you could blend colors. There are 10 of these metallic colors, and it, you know, again, where's that uh, page? Again, sneak peek. I do have three different colors there. The blue and the green was a nice... I, I should have had these switched, actually. I should have went purple, blue, green. I don't know what I was thinking. But, I mean, purple and green, that, that's a tough blend. And, I mean, there's definitely sort of a... more of a line between these two than these two, but it's not a stark straight line. You know, I just sort of did, you know, the scumbling between the two and then polished over it. But, yeah, you can get... I mean, it just looks like a mirror. <laughs> you might even be able to see reflections of my camera and the light in there. I don't know. But it was a pretty neat effect. So I just thought... I would do a little experiment here, uh, show you the results, just in case you have this little set of Neo Color 1 metallics, and you were thinking, oh, I really don't know what to do with this. There is a, there's an effect. You wouldn't necessarily have to use it for background. Um, so I did, in Small Victories, I did a third of a page with this green, and then the facing page, I did the entire page with this green, and that's how much I used. You see? So, I mean, there's a lot of pigment in these crayons. So you, it's not like you're having to, you know, use half a crayon for one page of, of uh, background. So yeah, just something you can try with uh, this little set of Neo Color 1 metallic crayons. And that's it for the July 2024 Coloring Odds and Ends video. Uh, so in Kaleidomorphia, the color along that I'm gonna be doing in sneak peek, I did the background. We're going to be doing this page. So this background was done with the Zig Art and Graphic Twin Black 
water-based marker and I, you know I've talked about this I think a number of times before I just cannot get over that marker it, it gives the most streak free <laughs> um, black background and doesn't bleed through although I see a tiny bit of bleed through right there I might have been going back over the uh, uh, that area there's also a little tiny bit of black on the edges because if you're gonna color right up to the edges of course it's gonna unless you're really careful you know it might uh, soak into the, to the edge of the paper and then be on the, the facing side a little bit but that's the color along we're going to do or I'm going to do hopefully soon in uh, Kirby Roseanne Clyde and Morgan if you like what you're seeing in my videos consider liking the video subscribing to my channel hitting the notification bell leaving a comment below um, letting friends know that you found a channel that you like and they might like it too I hope everyone is safe I hope everyone is well and I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring until next time folks take care bye bye